Hey folks, today we're visiting Falls Dam in central Otago. This irrigation dam sits in the headwaters of the Manuherakia River, just north of the town of St. Bathans. The dam itself is a rockfall gravity dam spanning 155 metres and has a height of 34 metres above the original riverbed. The most striking feature of this dam is the vertical morning glory spillway, where water falls 31.5 metres down a 5.1 metre diameter tunnel and so it exits out the base of the dam. The Morning Glory spillway gets its name from the fact that it resembles a blossom when water is flowing over its face. The spillway under flood conditions certainly doesn't resemble a blossom, as this footage from July 2023 shows. Another critical piece of the dam is the siphon pipe used to manage the flow of the irrigation water. In terms of its history, the dam was built by the government's public works department, commencing in 1931 and completed in 1935. At the height of the Great Depression, one of the construction goals was to engage as many unemployed men as possible. Let's now take a trip down to the base of the dam. Just going to go for a look inside the Falls Dam power station, owned and operated by Pioneer Energy. Falls Dam Power Station was built in 2003 and contains a Kaplan turbine producing a maximum output of 1250 kilowatts. It's now time to explore the 90 meter long access drive tunnel leading to the valve chamber in the heart of the dam. I'm locking these shut, so I'm not just down here and locking the tunnel. <laughs> The valve chamber contains the valves to both regulate the irrigation water and provide water for the power station turbine. It's time to head back out and up. A quick stop here to visualise the 1930s construction camp location. Just walking into what remains of the original houses built for the construction of the dam around 1932-1933 and all that remains now is the concrete fireplaces. Some scenic views looking down the Manuhir Kea River and then panning around to look back up towards Falls Dam. The final thought of the day is to reflect back to the workers of the 1930s. They endured harsh conditions living in tents and working through central Otago's scorching hot summers and bitterly cold winters to build this fantastic asset for the community.